Hey everyone, this is Pick for Life, and today's P4L review will be taking a look at another TFCon exclusive, this time from Fans Projects, and this is their Diaclone version of their Lost Exo Realm Voler, that's their LER03 Voler, the third member of their uh, Dinobots, and the third Diaclone version that they've released over the past, um, I think like year and a half or, or so, with their um, TFCon exclusives. Previously they had the Columbia version and the Kubar version, which I also did reviews on. But um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started with packaging review as always. And you can see it's very similar to the packaging that we got with Kubar and Bowler in that um, really nice kind of retro looking front with this, this grid line here. Nice image artwork of Bowler on the right. You do get a little picture of the Diaclone driver, and if you look in there, you can actually see him. See him. It's hard to see the actual figures in here because they're f pretty far back in the packaging. Uh, on the top, you get a focus on the alt mode, his pterodactyl mode, and you see his robot mode on the back. Same thing on the left side or its right side. On the other side, you get the same images, just reverse so you get a focus on the robot mode and the same thing on the bottom here. On the back you do get a bunch of extra product images mostly focusing on the robot mode you can see we get some images here with his sword him uh, kind of in a flight pose just standing there rear, rear view another kind of attack flying pose with his gun or missile launchers Another picture of the Diaclone driver over here, and then a single lonely one of him in alt mode. Alright, so that's really it for packaging. We'll go ahead and get this guy open and show you how he comes packaged inside. Opening up the packaging, you do get an additional cardboard, uh, I guess, sleeve that houses the actual plastic clamshell. And we'll try to pull this out without making too much of a mess. And you see in the background there are some instructions and everything as well as some of the accessories but again as we had with I think with only with Kubra we have this nice um, image back here of a kind of line art of Bowler which I really like getting it then out of the way a couple of cool things that you're going to get with this version is you're going to get a sticker sheet and I, I did want to spend a little bit of time talking about the sticker sheet because I was actually talking to the FP France Project reps at TFCon and they actually gave me some sticker sheets to review. Sorry it's getting so dark though. The lighting is kind of getting messed up with this reflection. But um, I got two sticker sheets from them directly and there's this big one here that also comes in the packaging and you can even see that there's slight differences because these are numbered with, you know, A, C, 1, and so forth. These don't, and it comes with an additional sticker sheet here, which I believe is for Voler. So I don't know why this one um, wasn't included in the packaging, and I don't know if it's going to be released later, but they gave it to me to review, so I'm going to review it. But in addition to these stickers, um, they're not just for Volar, they're for all three releases so far. So you got some for Kubra and you got some for uh, Columbia, the first two releases. You do get an instruction sheet, which is just kind of a big poster. Uh, taking you from Alt to robot which is how it comes packaged and then this little instruction sheet shows you where the stickers go for again Columbia, Kubra and Voler but uh, I, I, I'm not sure it doesn't look like again they it doesn't look like they include instructions for these pieces here so we're gonna have to figure that out and I literally have not messed with the figure yet so here we are with the clamshell, and if you guys remember, uh, Columbia was packaged in styrofoam, and then they switched over to plastic for um, Kubrar, their second release, and so they stuck with the plastic clamshell here. 
Again, uh, I'm a little disappointed that they didn't stick with the styrofoam just because I think that's kind of what it should have been uh, if they're going to do kind of a dive clone homage. But I still like the packaging. They still do a really good, great job. And again, you can see his little driver here. He's the same driver. We'll take a look at him in a bit. And he does pack, come packaged in alt mode. So let's get this guy out and start the review. So here we have Volar and his driver and accessories out of packaging. Uh, really quick, I just will go through the accessories really quick. And here we have Volar out of packaging. Real quick, let's go through his accessories while we have them out. First, we have his, uh, I guess, uh, Energon sword or whatever you want to call it. Classic kind of shape for swoop, including this little handle that his weapons usually have. He does have a couple pegs here which you can use for storage in um, various modes. Get that out of the way. He also has two missile slash blasters that you can make use of these two pegs or you can fold down the handle that you can use in both alt mode and robot mode. Again, we'll show that off in a little bit. We do have his little die clone driver and we'll go into a quick review of this guy. So the Diaclone Driver, I believe, is the exact same that we've gotten from the other uh, exclusive Diaclone versions of the LER um, line. And the head is on a swivel, so you can go all the way around if you'd like. It does have a ball-jointed shoulder. A tiny pinned elbow that gives you a little bit of a bend, not too much. Nothing in the waist. His hips are on ball joints, which give him a lot of back. A lot of forward, but actually very little outward movement. Not that you really need him to do the splits, but you don't have that option even. He does have a nice 90 degree knee bend. And as before, he still has his little magnetic feet in there. His feetums are magnetized. The back, this is what he looks like there. A little bit of hollowness, not too bad honestly for a figure this size. I do like the overall look and paint job that they have to make him look a little distinct. It does match Voller in his um in their both teal metallic teal chest and then kind of the blue plastic, dark blue plastic that he has elsewhere. And he does have a couple of nice silver paint apps on the knees. So that's a very nice detail for such a small figure. As for how he's supposed to ride on Fuller, he is supposed to just kind of sit up back here, or at least that's how they have him shown off in the product images. He has kind of a little ridge or two steps there that he can stand on, but not anything very defined from what I can tell. Maybe he can kind of sit back here as well. You can just have him hanging off his, <laughs> hanging off. Polar's back. I'm just, sorry. I don't know why it just looks really goofy. I kind of wish they did make use of these metallic feet and uh, ma magnet, magnetic feet and put some metal here like where these silver parts are that maybe you could connect them to with that feature. That would have been really nice but uh, I mean we didn't get it so I'm not going to complain about it. Let's get him off to the side. Accessory wise storage there's a couple of peg holes in his wings like here on either side you can do it on the front or the back really depending on what your style is how your mojo goes and then on the back here you can make use of the handle and plug it into his hand as you as you would expect and kind of have it come off of his backpack so you could do that as well. There are probably some other storage options that you can explore, but I'm not going to go into all those. Same thing with the sword. I believe you can make use of that peg and just store it there if you'd like. Alright, so let's do a quick 360 of this guy. This is how he comes packaged in um, the packaging. How? So I haven't folded out the wings yet, but we'll show off all the articulation and really nice chromey goodness in a second. One thing I did want to note on the, the back, it's kind of interesting that 
most uh, swoop iterations kind of fold up the legs to form his backpack. These guys actually use the arms, so it's a little bit different. I kind of like that. You do have these hands that just kind of hang off on the side, but it's not terrible. He does have a little tail back here as well. It does make his actual all bone legs kind of beefy, especially for a pterodactyl. But it's stylized, so it, you'll either like it or you won't. His wings are nice and large. And we'll go ahead and get into articulation at this point. When you have them kind of all aligned, it's very like scythe-like in how it looks. Really, really nice metallic paint going on. And they kind of fold up. So there's a pin there. It's a joint there. Here, you also have a joint that allows you to rotate this up and down. It's ratcheted. Good range of motion. You can actually ratchet back and forth like this, kind of as a shoulder joint. And if that weren't enough, you can also rotate it around on a ratcheted joint like so. So he has a lot of wing articulation, which is great. Very, very nice. And he also has a little claw up here, talon, whatever you want to call it. For his head, it's on a ball joint that actually makes use of the robot mode head since it's kind of stuck in here. You don't get a lot. You get a little bit of head bob. It's also on a hinge down here at the very inside base. You don't get a full kind of flying pose. I wish it could go a little bit higher, but it's not terrible. Can open up his mouth. See some serrated this going on here on both sides with his teeth. His chest does have a bit of a gap, but that's not too bad. Um, what else does he have on the upper body? I don't think he has anything else on the upper body. He does have a swivel at the waist. It's kind of uh, limited just because of the backpack. He does have some forward and back. He does have kind of an ab crunch in robot mode. And I'm not really sure how the joint works. I thought at first it was a ball joint, but I can't really tell. But I'll, I'll look into it in more detail once we get into robot mode. His legs are actually the same legs that you get in robot mode. So he does have ratchet hips. You can't, you can only get like one ratchet going laterally. And you don't really get much going unless you get the this leg out of the way. You don't get a lot going forward and back either, honestly. He does have some slightly articulated kneecaps. I think Columbia also had something like that. He does have a thigh swivel. Coming down to what is kind of his knee here. So you can actually make use of his actual knee in alt mode, but his, I guess, intended knee for all mode is this ball joint. Gives you great motion there. Range of motion. A pin joint here to go forward and back. And then his ankle or foot, whatever you want to call it at this point, has a ball joint as well. A nice tight ball joint. So you get a lot of um, posability out of the lower leg. More than I was expecting. So yeah, you can get them into some pretty cool dynamic poses. And once you get the wings out, they're pretty, they're pretty wide. I'm not going to break out the tape measure, but, you know, compared to my, you know, medium-sized Asian hands, curly Asian hands, they're about one hand width each, and then you get his chest. So yeah, that's really it for uh, alt mode. Let's go ahead and get this guy transformed from alt to robot mode. So the transformation is pretty simple, but they do have some um, interesting things going on. Let's go ahead and deal with the lower body first. I find that the best. So just get your foot kind of situated like this. Pull down the heel, or what looks like the heel is that's actually the front of the foot for robot mode. Go ahead and bring that down. Rotate that 180. Then you're going to pull down on the entire front of the leg, making use of this double hinge, just push the 
knee in and that will clip into place. And then you rotate this up and that kind of fills in the back of the robot mode leg. Very simple. Same thing on the other side, just kind of get this straightened out like so. Bring down the robot mode foot, rotate it 180. Pull on the front of the leg, clip the knee into place, and then rotate this all the way up. Does a nice job filling up the rear of the uh, robot mode leg. Next up, we'll go ahead and deal with the backpack. So I didn't mention his, his tail does have a single hinge for articulation and all modes. Sorry about that. Uh, I do want to thank Piog for actually showing me a better way to transform this than the instructions. So the instructions say just to pull these arms apart. That doesn't work really well. And that's because if you look down here, this joint is actually kind of like a, an eye joint or T joint. And pulling that out, you might damage your figure. But as part of the transformation, you're supposed to extend the arms. If you hold this one in place and extend the right one, and slide that tab out, it's much better for you than actually trying to just pull it out. From here then you can actually untab. So there's tabs that go into the back, which you're not gonna be able to really see, but you there's a tab there that taps into this shoulder piece. So you pull that out and then rotate that around. I'm gonna go ahead and finish transforming the arms since we're here, just extend the arms fully. You'll have them clip, click into place, rotate the hands and those tab into place. And then you're going to want to rotate at the bicep joint 180 and then come down to the hand, wrist, and rotate 180. Same thing on this side, 180, 180. From here, um, we're going to rotate at this large shoulder joint. Let me fold these wings up just because they're getting kind of cumbersome. So this whole kind of gray shoulder joint will rotate 180 degrees. And as you do that, there's actually a, um, a tab that sticks out on the shoulder joint that's going to sit inside this little indentation here. There's two ridges and it needs to kind of sit in between those. And that kind of secures the whole shoulder joint in place. It doesn't do a great job to be perfectly honest. I wish it was a little bit tighter, but it, does a decent job, I suppose. And then you're gonna rotate the arm at the shoulder 180 down. And then similarly with the wings, you're gonna to wanna to rotate that 180. So they're in the right orientation. All right, so we'll show that off one more time. Go ahead and rotate these shoulder joints all the way around 180. Make sure they sit in that ridge. Rotate the shoulder 180. And then rotate the wing uh, see, so that joint came undone just because the ratchet on the uh, the wing is pretty hefty. So it would have been nice to have a little bit more security in that tab for uh, the rotating shoulder mechanism. All right, now we're going to go ahead and separate the chest. So the chest is on double hinges each side and the back of the chest actually tabs. So you can see those kind of alternating tabs. Just pull those out, use the double hinges to rotate this up. And once you get up like that, you're gonna separate the dyno mode head from the face, rotate that down, and this blue tab here on either side will go into the jaw, which also has a circular port. Just need to get it kind of rotated somewhat in place and get it started on each side. And then once you have that, you can just firmly squeeze on either side to secure the chest. And there we have Volar in robot mode. And he still looks really nice in this mode. The colors are great. I love the chrome wings. The same kind of articulation that you got off for the wings and the legs still exist here and we'll go over that in a second. But he does have really, he has a really nice face sculpt. Oh, I didn't rotate the tail up, so go ahead and rotate that up like that. But the, the head sculpt, and I'm sorry about the lighting, the metallic wings are doing crazy things, crazy things to 
my uh, autofocus and lighting. But yeah, the, the red eyes look really nice. He has a bit of a chin, which Swoop usually does. He does have a ball jointed head. A really limited motion going forward, so he's almost, almost perpetually looking up slightly. He doesn't get much down at all, which is uh, a bit of a shame. Zoom back out. Uh, his shoulders are on a ball joint. Well, the, the socket itself is a ball joint. And then there's a hinge here that allows him to get the shoulders rotated upwards like that. Bicep swivel that we saw before. He does have, he does have double jointed elbows, but you really only get use of the top one so you get 90 degrees he does have that wrist swivel and then his four fingers are pinned as a single molded piece as I said before he does have um, a swivel at the waist and it's not a ball joint now that I see it it's just a swivel but there's a joint inside there that is a dedicated ab joint and he looks like he only gets one additional click going down but you do have that option same ratcheted thighs nice and tight great range of motion there ratchets going outwards he has these um, ports on the side that allow you to store the sword if you'd like as kind of a sheath but they get in the way of the hip pieces so you don't get a lot of outward motion. Thigh swivel, double jointed knees which let him bend all the way up like that. Same kind of knee, slight knee articulation that we had before. His foot, he has that ball joint at kind of the ankle but because this is kind of secured into place you don't really get much use out of that if at all very little unless you kind of like move this out and then situate it back in his toe is on a swivel and can go up a bit not really down much but you make use of that ball joint to go forward and back you can't really make make use of it to go side to side and I think that's it for articulation uh, the wings we already went over same exact articulation there so no surprises the one thing I'll say about um, robot mode is while it looks really good as 360, it does suffer from the dreaded uh, too much space between the ratchets and the hips. And a lot of people have been complaining about that for, for quite a while. So this is one ratchet out. And it, it's actually not bad if it's kind of floating, but once you get some weight on it, it does make him kind of do the splits a tiny bit. Here, let me, I'm at a kind of a weird angle. Let me get up a little bit higher again. Just looking down. But yeah, that's, that's a bit of a shame. You can kind of get around that by doing some rotation at those thighs and it makes the gap look less pronounced. Really nice paint apps. That teal metallic blue is accented in a lot of few subtle places like there um, he does have silver on the foot that breaks up a lot of the gray and even this gray looks like different colors this is like a darker gray and a lighter gray like the thighs some highlights on the knees again some more of the teal and the back is pretty clean he does have this shoulder joint that does stick out quite a bit on the back almost like shoulder blades but it's not awful And once again, the chrome on the face, on the chest in here, looks really nice and is offset by the chrome silver wings. So I haven't been collecting this series. I, I've bought them and reviewed them, but I've actually just been um, buying them for a member of the forums and just doing a review just so I can get that to him at, um, at the cost I purchased. But this guy is by far my favorite of the three that have been released so far. 
He's just really dynamic. He has some cool stuff going on. He's much more fun, I think, and his transformation isn't as frustrating as Columbia or Kubar, I think. And maybe it's just because flyers are just so much cooler than than most other figures. So I do like it. Uh, I do wish the shoulders were a bit more improved. They do look a little bit goofy the way that they're cylindrical here and kind of just look like they stick off the shoulders. But the blue and the teal blue and the gold and the silver, they all just they all just work. So again, we can bring out the guns, flip down that handle. And there's a little ridge here and a little notch that you can slide into and that secures it really well. You don't really have to make use of that notch, I don't think, but that will secure it very well. Well, actually, I guess you kind of do. But he has his options, he can do a wield or you can go ahead and put them on the shoulders as before. Sword wise, uh, how do they, I don't remember if they showed exactly how it stores on the back, but again, I showed you how it stores on the side, kind of like a sheath. I guess you can just go ahead and put, put, peg this on the back wherever you really like. Seem to be a couple ports, maybe this one works as well. Uh, that one doesn't work, but you can still um, store it up here. And there might be some other storage options. I'll have to look at the instructions again, but overall he looks really nice. I, I do like that a lot. The sword alternatively in his hand. It's a little bit of a tighter fit. doesn't have that ridge, so you do have the option to rotate it whichever way you want. Looks really nice as well. We can go ahead and bring his Diaclone dry route just to hang out. So yeah, that's really it for Robot Road Review. I totally forgot I wanted to show you guys how to apply the stickers for Volar. So the instructions here are pretty good overall. Uh, the black and white does make some of them really hard to see like this C6 is really hard to see. The C5 is a little hard to see where they're pointing. Um, but I'll go ahead and show you and I think there's actually one mistake here with C2 and C3. So, so there's a couple of places. The C1 are these thigh pieces that go on the thighs here. These long gold pieces. Uh, C2 and C3, these are the ones I think that are, are mixed up. So they say in the instructions C2, which are the red ones, are supposed to go up here. But there's actually a square molded piece that is up here. And this one's uh, kind of a trapezoid. And this C2 clearly needs to go down here because it's cut to that size to fit into that small indentation. So I think that's an error, even though they show it the other way. Maybe it's an error in that they printed it wrong or cut it wrong. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm positive that this, the orientation is supposed to be like this because otherwise this won't fit in. Uh, C4 are these thigh, uh, not thigh, shin pieces, exterior shin pieces. So C4. Let's see what else is left. Um, C5. Okay, C5, 6, and 7 all take place on the forearm here. So C5 goes on the front. C6 goes on the front here. That's kind of hard to see. It's a little rectangular piece that comes out here. And C7 are on the outside of the forearms. C8, 9, 10 are on this midsection of the wing. So 8, 9, and 10. 11, 12, 13, I believe, are the main section. And then they don't show the opposite side, but it's obviously it's pretty self-explanatory. They don't point it out, but it goes... Um, Oh yeah, they don't even number them. So yeah, just on the opposite side, obviously if you've done C8 through 13, you'll be able to figure out the other side, the mirrored side. And then the center, he has a C14, which goes on his beak right here, and the C15 that goes on his crotch plate. And those are the stickers that come with 
fuller uh, in the packaging. Like I said, I got some extra stickers that I have no idea where they go to. Like, no idea. I thought they were supposed to go to Volar, but I could not figure out where they would go. Like, these big sections, there's nothing on this figure that would even accommodate something of this size. So, maybe it's for Grimlock, their Grimlock that's coming out, or one of the earlier figures, Kubrar or Columpio, but I don't know. And I don't have those figures, so I have no idea what to do with this sheet or my extra um sheet here maybe i'll maybe i don't know what i'll do with them maybe i'll give them away as prizes i'm not sure if fans projects will want them back or not but yeah that i wanted to cut to that before i did my final thoughts on this figure which are that um like i said i've been honestly passing on this line uh i i i honestly didn't like this kind of style all that much the look was really good but uh, I had some issues with Columpio and Kubrar as far as overall transformation and fun um, fun factor of the figure. But now that I have their Volar, I'm really rethinking whether I need to go back and pick up those first two again. Especially since I have these sticker sheets that I need to complete. I need to get these on some figures. I'm OCD to a degree. so. Having only partially used sticker sheets is really grating on my nerves. And I've been on a, it doesn't help that I've been on a real big um, repo label click, uh, kick as of late. And so this came at like the worst possible time. Um, I, I was adding some repo labels that I got for free and then I got these. And now in, in the middle of shooting this, I ordered like a hundred dollars worth of repo labels for some figure. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I almost certainly want to go back and get the Diaclone versions to apply these stickers. But final thoughts are, again, he's by far my favorite of the group. Um, one thing that I did miss is that you can, there's actually peg holes on these shoulder blades that you can store the sword on the back like that. Sorry about that. Sorry for that, um, that kind of tangent that we went off on. But yeah, he's, he's easily my favorite of the group. He does have some posability issues. Um, his heel could, if it was articulated, it would be much better. It, and given that he's pretty back heavy, um, depending on how you pose the wings, he really could have benefited from that. But all that you get with this figure from, you know, the nice accessories uh, that you get with these, the, um, the stickers, which, you know, if you got third party or would it be third party or fourth party stickers for for this guy probably would have cost you know somewhere between um eight and eight and fifteen bucks or something like that those are included as well as the ones for the previous figures which are probably also you know a few bucks that they threw in and the little diaclone driver if you're um into diaclone then obviously this is going to be right up your alley and i i just think this looks better than the retail release just the overall finish and um look is just really really intriguing and again really does make me want to go back and find somebody who's letting go of their dying clone ones and uh, completing the line because now i want to keep him but i i don't want to keep him by himself so anyway i'm rambling on and on and on so again this was the tfcon exclusive dying clone fans project um volar he will be available i believe at the upcoming uh, Charlotte TFCon. I don't. I think if they have, I think they held some back for that convention as well, and some retailers will be having them as well, um, including my sponsor Toy Dojo. So if you want to pre-order this guy, or depending on when you're watching this video, pick this guy up and add him to your collection. Go ahead and click click on the link in the description below. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and share around with your friends on all your sh social media sites and all sorts of social media tools that you guys use. And um, as always, if you wanna keep up to date with me, you can keep up to date by clicking the subscribe button if you haven't already, or go ahead and like my page, Pick for Life Reviews on Facebook. But yeah, I think that's all for today with um, Volar. Uh, I really do like him. Hope you guys are able to pick him up, if not um, at the con, online. But that's all for today, everyone. Have a good one.